Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. You look very fresh for five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I am fresh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know Come what? On. Yeah. Hi, Alex. Hi. Hi. Könnt ihr mich hören? Yeah, we can hear you perfectly okay, well. Thank you. Nice. I was about to say, you know, you know what? I was already fresh 24 hours ago at five in the morning on the 18th of November because I thought the 18th of November is the 18th of November in Canada and in Germany at the same oh. time. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> I'm sure. Have... Yeah. I should have mentioned that we are nine hours behind you, not before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I could have thought of it myself. But yeah, Alex and, and I were sitting here um, also already 24 hours ago at 5 o'clock in the morning yesterday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so, okay. I think uh, we are all uh, back again. I see uh, 34. Um, participants at the moment. Uh, for those of you who have just uh, joined us, welcome uh, to, the uh, to, to the screening, well, the screening is over already, and the uh, discussion about uh, the, the award-winning film Mazatov Cocktail with, um, um, with the film's director and uh, the leading actor uh, with uh, whom I will introduce in a, in a minute. And uh, for those of you who watched the film online uh, in the past few days via the link that we have provided, uh, uh, welcome to the show, so to speak. We at the German consulate in Vancouver are convinced that uh, everybody who saw uh, the film either uh, a couple of uh, minutes ago or uh, in the past few days have plenty of questions in regards to the topics uh, the film deals with. We are extremely thankful that both the film's actor, Akari Kayet, and uh, its leading actor, Alexander Wertmann, set their alarms very early this morning. And I just, we just realized that they did the same yesterday morning. It's 5, 5 a.m. right now in Germany. Uh, we are extremely thankful uh, for them to join us for an online discussion presented uh, by uh, my colleague, Natasha Deiminger uh, from the German Council in Vancouver and Florian Gassner, Associate Professor at the Center for Central, Eastern and Northern European Studies at UBC. So in the first place for all the, the online participants, please put your hands virtually together and give a warm welcome to Arkady and Alexander in Germany. Uh, keep in mind it's five o'clock in the morning, Friday at the moment. And after putting the hands together, uh, Natasha and Florian, the, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, first questions already came in the F and F and F. Thank you. Yes, F and Q, whatever um, section. But um, I would just like to mention that we can make the people who would like to ask a question also a panelist so that you can ask the question yourself and be shown with a video and audio. So if you would like to ask the question yourself, please let us know. That might be um, more interesting for everyone when Arkady and Alexander can actually see the people who ask the question. Um, I would like to start with a um, more generic question. How did you come to make this movie, Arkady? I mean, what made you want to do this movie? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Also, thank you for the first question. So hi again from, from Germany. Uh, early morning. I'm sitting in a pretty ugly um, <laughs> hotel something uh, place lobby because like um, in my room there's someone sleeping so I had to uh, move out and I hope it's fine. Um, so first question, yeah, I would answer with uh, by starting with saying that my uh, biography is um, somehow linked to the film because I was born in a former Soviet Union in a place called Moldova today. Um, I immigrated with my parents um, in the context of the so-called quota refugee Jewish movement to Germany when I was very little, only a um, couple of months old. I grew up in Germany in, in the West, uh, in the Ruhr area also where the film takes place. Um, after my school, I went for a year on a gap year to Israel 
I try to find out what I want to do, what I want to study. And because like for lack of ideas, I started to study film. And um, I did my undergraduate in Cologne, moved to South Germany um, to do my diploma in film directing. And, um, you know, I wanted to make a film um, about how does it feel to be Jewish in Germany today? And it was somehow um, provoked by my professors because they always, you know, say, do something in film school. They say something personal, do something from your life, something you know uh, to speak about. And I wanted to communicate this feeling, um, okay, what does it feel like to be Jewish in Germany, okay? This like Jewish experiences in Germany, for example, what does it do to us when our own presence doesn't seem to trigger anything other than the, in the minds of the Germans and the image of the Holocaust? Or how does it feel when coming out um, as being Jewish to a group of non-Jews silence this group because they don't know what to say or how to react because they only have these uh, images in their heads? Or how does it feel if people can't pronounce the word Jew, right? So, um, and also the experience about like, you know, in Germany, there is this, like this, this speaking about Jewish life and like people say, okay, we, we speak about Jewish life. But to be honest, like in Germany, most people, when they speak about Jewish life, they speak about dead Jews. You don't really speak about Jewish life, right? Um, so we asked ourselves, what do actually the Germans know about Jews? Tell me five things, except let's say Hitler, Holocaust, anti-Semitism, and I think the basic problem is the only reason why Jews in Germany are talked about the Holocaust and anti-Semitism. The Germans know the Jews only from the position we're the perpetrators, you're the victims, and we approach Jewish culture only through that if we approach it at all. And no one speaks about the Soviet, the post-Soviet Russian-speaking Jewish community in Germany. Uh, in which I grew up and which makes up the vast majority of Jews living here today. This is a topic which is not told in German film at all. Um, so we thought, okay, let's produce a film from a subjective Jewish point of view, from the subjective Jewish perspective. And um, yeah, let's, 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 let's show how it feels and let's, let's give some facts and let's portray this uh, character Dima, which is unusual for, uh, Jewish character in German film, and I can speak later about it if you're interested. Um, so everything that you show in the movie is something that you have experienced yourself, right? No, I would say, you know, about the film uh, in the press have been written a couple of times that it's a satire film um, about like Jewish life in Germany. And I would say it's not so satirical. The satirical thing about it is that Dima meets this um, German non-Jewish characters all in one day on a trip to his, uh, to his city. And I would say I have met them many, many times, but not in a day, maybe over a couple of months, over a couple of years. In a script-making process, we call it these characters who, who me, Dima meets, we call them the archetypes in the German-Jewish dialogue, you know? Mm -hmm. So people you meet again and again, like a, a character like the, like, like the teacher, a character like the guy at the traffic station, or even uh, there are outer Jewish, uh, non-Jewish characters from the outer Jewish world, but also from the inner Jewish world. For example, like the grandfather of Lat and the Falafels. So this, this is a inner Jewish archetype um, I've met many times also, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Alexander, um, do you share that, that kind of experience with Arkady? Have you met teachers like that or co-students who behaved like that in school? Because I mean, for those who do not know, um, Alexander is also um, Jewish and you come from Russia, your parents, right? So, um, so hello everyone also from me. I just, yeah, I, my parents there, I have a similar um, uh, story that, um, like Akadi, my parents, they are also from Moldova and they also came to Germany, but I uh, was born and grew up in Germany also. And um, like Akardi said, I think in the Jew like being Jewish in Germany, that you you meet some people in your life that uh, they are like in the film. And um, 
I met teachers like her and I met people like like my classmate all um of course I I met them this is like archetypes you, you what Akadi said you in you in the film you have one day but you you meet this people in like in a few months or in a year you have this archetypes who are coming in your life so yeah I, I experienced this kind of people <laughs> did you react kind of the same way as Dimitri does because it was very interesting that he does not portray these um the victim position right and um I, I like that attitude so much as probably everyone else here that makes the movie so interesting that he is not a victim that he stands for himself and says no this is not going to take place here is that something that that you would say yeah I, I do have the same approach yeah I think the the most um the biggest um unterschied I don't know what's mm -hmm. difference The difference? biggest difference between Dima and me, because it is a typecast, there are a lot of similar situations in Dima's life and in my life, they are similar, but the most different thing is, I think the thing that Dima is not a, like, he's going for it and he's like not being in, um, uh, putting himself in a position by people um he he don't want to be in this position i think i'm i'm a little bit different i'm, I'm more shy than dimar and uh, um i wouldn't hit someone in his face or or be so confident like dima this mm -hmm. is i think the most uh, um difference between me and him okay yeah. interesting because it, he is so charming and you tend to forget throughout the film that he is actually has hit someone right because i mean it doesn't fit his character in my opinion um, yeah he don't want to hit someone yeah there's some there's a there's a time where he just cannot handle anymore and then there's it's happening so yeah totally understandable one, in my opinion. one yeah. one one too much yeah absolutely um i have more lots of more questions um you you said that um Arkady, i'll just you quickly said, also jump yeah. in so that people back home because we yeah. didn't properly announce it at the beginning of the session uh, if you want to ask questions either of arkadi or of alexander at the bottom of your screen you will find a button that says q and a and if you click that button then you can type your question in and we can sort them and then call them up as it is. And you can also write in your question in person, please. And then we will allow it that you can actually ask your question in person rather than uh, just uh, reading your question for you. We already have three questions here, but feel free to keep them coming as we move along. Sorry for the interruption. No problem. Um, you, you said in some interviews, Akadi, that um you expected the Jewish community to like the movie, but you were su very surprised that the German community also liked the movie so much. Um, I thought the total opposite. I thought, oh, this is a movie the Germans are going to really love. But I was wondering if the Jewish community um, had the same kind of experience when watching the movie, because, yeah, I don't know, uh, that I was interested in how you came to the conclusion that the Germans might not like it, but the Jewish would. No, I, I didn't say the Germans won't like them. I said um, I was surprised by, you know, when we, when we produced the film, like everyone before it was out, everyone around us said, oh, this is pretty provo uh, provocative and this is pretty aggressive. So you might, the, there might will be people who will disagree with you and there will be people who will, you know, have a totally different opinion and uh, be prepared for discussions with the film and so on and so forth. So I remember myself being quite nervous before the premiere of the film. And I mean, it's out for almost two years now, <clears throat> roughly one and a half between two years. And there were almost no negative feedback to, on the film, you know, neither from the press, neither from like people around us. And it, If, like, you know, if you produce a film like that and um, 
you also criticize things and everyone is like cheering up for the film from the Jewish community, from the non-Jewish community. So I asked myself, um, how relevant can a satirical film be if it doesn't hurt anyone, you know? Um, so, and how much did we feed, um, uh, I would say, um, a Jewish-ish fetish in Germany um, if, if like everyone is like liking the film and I mean uh, we've been we've been given like uh, several awards and prizes in Germany and also internationally but like in Germany there's always this like um, this feeling of how many people actually like characters from the film for example the teacher Frau Yachtuba how many of them are sitting in the juries and, and giving giving awards to us because uh, like where are the voices who kind of um, disagree with, with this film and who are the, vo the voices and the people who found themselves in the characters portrayed in the film. And this is something which makes me skeptical in a, in a way, you know. Um, but I don't want to argue against our film, obviously. I mean, it was a, I, I, I truly believe that like many people like it and that many people are honestly liking it. It was very successful also on German TV. Um, and this, the audience are not only people, you know, who, who are giving the price for the film or something. Um, so this makes me a little bit skeptical because, I mean, I can, I can, um, I could also say, I mean, Germany is shaped by a strong interest in Jewish themes, right? Um, this is a desire which expresses, um, you know, it expresses a desire for a vibrant Jewish culture in Germany and led for many years for a cultural offer that is primarily created by non-Jewish Germans for non-Jewish Germans, you know, in the 80s and the 90s. So the interest in Jewish themes were always big in Germany. It reacts obviously to the void uh, left by the Shoah and replaces the invisibility of Jewish life with great visibility. And we saw for many, um, for many years like Klezma Festival, Jewish film events, cultural events with with no Jews involved, you know, at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. So um, the desire for Jewish life in Germany makes clear that Jews play an important role, an important public role, and Jewish culture plays an important public role in Germany, in the German self-image. Um, so so I obviously I know that the Jewish themes films are always, um, you know, they're looked at different then maybe other themes and it's 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 of course it's nice to give an award to a jewish themed film in germany because it always proves something to the society you know jewish life in germany um always proves the narrative of the good germany mm -hmm. so i'm and i'm always skeptical a little bit towards that so and i think that's what i meant in the interview when i said that oh, okay yeah. okay um and how did the jewish community react did was that equally? I mean, everyone <clears throat> thinking it's a great movie or was there criticism somewhere? No, I think for the Jewish community um, in, in general, in Germany, I mean, I mean, of course, it's also a question of, of age and of generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Let, let's speak um, in, in my age, in my generation, the so-called German Jewish uh, community. Um, it was it was uh, extremely positive, and I'm 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 quite happy about it because of course like I'm I'm more interested in like the because it's like from the subjective Jewish point of view this film I'm more interested in the kind of also the Jewish voices uh, in Germany than the non-Jewish and I have the feeling the film has been in many many like um, Jewish institutions and festivals and um, in Germany I've been to Jewish communities and Jewish um, youth movements where the film is shown and the film is something I would say very empowering um, because um, you know speaking from myself I remember myself being younger and I grew up with films where you saw Jewish characters always uh, you know being weak, being beaten up, hiding, running away, um, being uh, cursed at. And I was always um, hoping for a kind of a Jewish superhero. 
you know, someone who is punching back, someone who's strong, who's fighting. Because like if when you see these films, like over and over again, films like Schindler's List, The Pianist, Life is Beautiful, this were the films like I grew up with, you know? And it, when you okay. see this like weak, weak, short context characters over and over again, you have to believe it, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I always, always wanted this like, um, this like strong fighting back uh, Jewish character. And you can say Jewish cultural history and Jewish history in general is full of this like resistant hero mm -hmm. figures. Um, so I have the feeling that like Dima also represents this like the self-confident uh, young Jewish um, generation in Germany. And that's why it's, um, it's perceived so positively. Interesting, okay. Um, there are some questions in the Q&A. I hand them over to Florian. Here we have a, a, maybe just probably something you already touched on. There's a question by our friend Christine Spreta regarding age groups, because you mentioned the film and its success in age groups. Did you have any feeling about whether the film was successful in all age groups? Because our colleague Christine Spreta writes that her two teenage sons didn't want to see it, but she doesn't write why. Maybe they don't like films. Maybe they should go to the theater. <laughs> but then maybe why, there's also... Why yeah, maybe Christina can follow up on that. But there's another, there's a broader question, which is uh, by Annette Hinrichs Pim. Uh, the question is, why did you choose the ending you chose? Mm. So this for me, just I think, um, there's only one possible ending uh, to this film for me. Um, we can think about the alternatives to this ending, right? I mean, you can maybe specify also on the ending. I guess um, you're talking about, um, I guess you're talking about the hit uh, into the camera. Am I right, Annette? We can't, let me see if she wrote something. No. I would assume so. She's not fast enough to write right now, I guess. But yeah, I, okay, I assume that's what she means, yeah. Yeah, I assume also. So um, that's quite interesting because there were many discussions regarding the ending of the film, discussions I have with uh, my professors and also with editorials because like this film was produced with public money in Germany, you know, there were broadcast to be broadcast involved. And I found myself debating this ending and people asking me, why is it so violent? And why can't this uh, two guys, why can't they make up? Why can't they reach out to each other, shake hands and um, kind of finish the film that way? And that's a very German non-Jewish perspective, you know? Longing for reconciliation, not only um, in this talk uh, with my professor or with the editorial from the broadcasting uh, channel, it's something like society always expects from, um, from the kind of Jewish community in Germany. Like I said in the beginning, um, Jews are assigned with a certain role in Germany, right? A good Jew is the one who takes away it away the weight from German shoulders and proves them that they became good and Jewish life is safe in Germany and can prosper and a Jewish character which is thankful and who is forgiving and who is shaking hands and I would say Dima contradicts this um, so loved Jewish character in Germany he's an aggressive Jew who doesn't fit in in this um, yeah you can't say rehearse theater or whatever doesn't want to um, shake hands because, I mean, I think it's it's okay to be aggressive. I think feelings of aggression, rage, anger, these are authentic feelings. And I feel them every time I read about anti-Semitism in the press or I see anti-Semitic attacks in the news, which are happening more and more often in Germany recently. And I have these feelings, right? And obviously we live in a country where we can't go around like Alex said and break each other's noses. But these feelings are, are, are absolutely authentic and, and, and true. And I think 
they have to be in art, they have to be in film, because um, this is also um, a way to punch back, a way to fight back. And um, this is the only possible ending for me. And I think, you know, in film, you always have this hero's journey, right? So there is a character and there is a goal. And on the way to reach this goal, he's changing, he's processing and developing, like he's going through a development. And in the end, he learns something. And in our film, there is also a hero's journey, but like Dima doesn't have to change, right? It's the world around him who always have this like opinions, projections, cliche thinking um, about Dima. So the film starts with a, with a hit, like he hits Toby. And then on the way, he meets all his characters. And in the end, he's still the same because like Dima doesn't have to change. It's the world around him. That's why the film ends exactly the way it started like it started with a, with a hit and ends or it started with a punch and ends with the with a hit um yeah i hope this explains it makes and sense i think i'd have a like a connecting question for alexander here because i i feel that one of the first things you're typically asked is how similar is dima to your biography and then you like they want you to say well i moved from the soviet former soviet sphere and i'm jewish also so, but what I find the most interesting is how Arkady said, Germans are used to seeing Jewish death. They're not used to seeing Jewish life. And also based on statistics and those premises, in theory, you might be the first piece of Jewish life people see. And I imagine when you were preparing for this role, that must've been something you were thinking about that you were going to be like the first bit of Jewish life many people maybe see when they're watching this movie. And how are you going to play that? How do you represent that? Yeah, like, um, actually, I didn't thought that, like, um, I think it really, it was a relief for, for the Jewish community to have a film like this, to, to not be a victim anymore. And a lot of friends and a lot of um, teenagers they, they they that i know because i was like uh, in in jewish summer camps and helping out and were looking for this uh, small childs and ch uh, teenagers and there it just was a relief so in in the beginning of the film we i think we even didn't thought about it that it could be something like this so um, for me this was when i, I saw the script i read it and it was just from the beginning I had the feeling I have to play it. I, I have to do it. This, this is my role. I have to do it. I'm going to make it. And then I, and I read it and a lot of scenes I really can, can approach on, on them. Like um, I, uh, um, you can relate. relate, sorry. Relate. Yes. yes right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I, I don't think that like there was a thought that, now we're going to do a movie that is like going to hit and uh, going to show the Jewish life and uh, going to, to show it in a new way. Maybe for a few people, it was a completely new way. But for me, and I think also for Kadi, this is, this is our life. It's like this is happening. And we, I think we just want to do a good film that people enjoy. Yeah, but I, can, I can add, add to this. Um... I think we wanted to produce also a, a, a film we ourselves would like to see to, about this topic, you know, because I was speaking a little bit about uh, Jewish film in Germany. And I think Jewish life consists of many, many things and much less of uh, what people like to tell about it in, uh, on, on German screens, in German films and on TV. You know, I can, I can, I can speak about this a little bit more because in most films since 1945 in German cinema and German film after 1945, the Shoah, the Holocaust is formative for almost all characters, Jewish characters in German film. Jewish characters are always shown in the context by the biography and psychology in the context of the Holocaust. So um, in German film and television after 1945, the most present image of Jews um, is that the one of the victims of the Holocaust? And also, um, I would say there is um, a kind of visual construction of uh, Jewish life in German feature films. And this one is linked 
to a visual recognizability of Jews, right? Also, um, I mean, Jews are mostly religious. So what you see in German film, you see elements of the Shoah which are religious, right? So, and this is something which is not um, adaptable for and, and not fitting for the vast majority of Jews living here. Like I, like I said, 90 more than 90% came from the Soviet Union, Jews living here. Till the 90s, we had 25,000 Jews in the West and 5,000 Jews in the East. 200, almost 210, 220,000 Jews from Soviet Union came here. And these guys, um, they're not religious because they're they are coming from a communist uh, country, right? They are, my parents are strong, believing atheist Jews. Um, they're, so they're not religious and they don't, they have a, they brought a totally different perspective to Germany. They don't see the, the, themselves as the ones um, who are the victims of the Shoah, of the Holocaust. They see themselves as the ones who won the war, who defeated the Nazis, right? Uh, where the, you know, my, my great grandfather and also like the great grandparents of many, many uh, people here in Germany, they fought in the war, they, they, they defeated the Nazis in Berlin. So it's a complete like different perspective. They don't see themselves in the community of the Jews who were murdered in Germany, who were um, expelled from Germany or fled Germany. And, but this is the place they are put in, you know, also not only in society, but also in um, German film. So Jews have a very limited repertoire in, on German screens, but I have a feeling not only in German screens, but also in, in society, but I have the feeling this range of roles is changing uh, slowly, slowly due to more young native German Jewish voices who are like privileged enough and comfortable enough by growing up in Germany, going through German institutions, education system, and are privileged enough now to make decadent things like uh, shooting films or writing books, or like have the time and privilege to reflect on German Jewish identity. This is something like also like uh, my parents or the, 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 the older generation of uh, Jews who came here, they had other problems than like this kind of things, you know? They had the problems of the migration, like finding a work, learning language. And this is something like I see more and more, not only in film, but in general, like in art, but also, you know, in the, in the intellectual debate in Germany, that kind of, um, you are challenging this place, which is prepared for you, which is prepared for Jewish life in Germany. Yeah. Interesting. There is another interesting question that I would like from the um, Q and A. Um, in regard to the ending, Stefan Haag asked that, in regard to the ending, did you think of Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing? Uh, this is a while ago, uh, I, I've seen that. Um, I think something, it's, a, it's a black cinema, I think. Um, no, I haven't thought of it, but maybe some, subconsciously somehow. Um, yeah, who, who did ask that? I mean, you can people also also speak uh, with video? Here? Yeah, that no. would be that they would be much. Be no, we can make them speakers, so it would be much nicer because then they can explain. Um, yeah. So um, so be brave, be brave, and uh, come and uh, have breakfast exactly. with us. Yeah, <laughs> or dinner. Yeah. yeah. But in the oh. meantime, there's other questions. So Jerry C. asks, what was the point you were making regarding Israeli and Palestinian relations? It seemed to me that you were trying to show that there is great diversity of opinion on this issue in the Jewish community. Is that correct? It's absolutely correct. This is, there's not, not much to add. I mean, uh, the, the, the range of opinions is wide, it's like from Zionist to anti-Zionist, from left to right, conservative, liberal, modern, like the approach to Israel is extremely individual. And I would say there is not this one voice um, in Germany um, towards Israel. And the interesting thing is it doesn't really matter like what your personal opinion is. 
um, the moment there is a conflict in the Middle East or the moment you say you're Jewish, there is this reduction to not only being Jewish, but also being the representative of Israel, right? Or feeling like the Israel's ambassador in, in German public. And that's quite interesting. So when you say you're Jewish, someone has a question um, about Israel, about the conflict, about, um, about the war. And you know, as I said, the range of like being um, Israel supportive um, is wide or being Israel, like being critical towards Israel. So is, uh, I think, the Israeli experience by Jews. I mean, there are Jews who, who spend time in Israel like I did. There are Jews who have family there. Um, there are Jews who have never been to Israel. There are Jews who have been there for vacation, for laying at the beach and um, going for a swim. So, um, yeah, and this is also, I would say, Dima. Like, I, I believe he has his opinion about Israel, but he's not interested in, um, in speaking about it every time and like being put in this situation and reduced to, yeah, to being Israeli maybe, yeah. Mary Gell, who's joining us from Michigan, uh, has a quest has two questions. She's trying to figure out where she can acquire the movie. I can tell you that it's streamed over Canopy if your university has the license. And in the mean, there is a question she has for the two of you. Why did you choose to make a short film rather than a feature length film? She loves short films, but with this one, she wanted more. I totally agree with her. Um. So first of all, you, yeah, you can stream the film on Canopy and also the film has, has an Israeli distributor, which is called GoTo Films. And it's, if you Google GoTo Films and Mazel Tov Cocktail, you will find it. And also it's on Vimeo. So I, it's not accessible from North America, but with the, um, yeah, there are ways around it. Um, let's put it like that. Um, yeah, we, we made the short because it, it was made in, in the context of my studies, you know, and um, feature films are quite expensive. Um, we didn't have the money. And also we didn't uh, have the time for it, you know. Um, we, like you in, in, in studies, you make a first year film, second year film, third year film, and then in your diploma, you maybe do a feature and I'm in this, like, I'm doing my diploma soon. And, um, yeah, it wasn't, uh, there was no, there was no possibility to make a feature out of it. Now, like, we had requests to make a feature out of it and to make a show out of it, a series. Now I have the feeling that we said everything we wanted to say in 30 minutes. So, um, very often, like, in series or in feature films, I have the feeling they are just um, long-gezogen, um, prolonged. Yeah, prolonged. Um, yeah. We put everything we wanted to say in this minutes. That's too bad. I would have loved it to be longer. And so I heard that from many people. That's a, that's a good feeling, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> As so long as we didn't want to make a feature, so people would have said after like 60 minutes, oh, okay, the time now. <laughs> yeah, no, no. There's no. a question from an anonymous contributor, but I feel you've answered this already. The question is how similar or different would such a movie be if it took place in Russia? Are there similar stereotypes for how people approach Jewishness? And I think you talked about how in Russia, the self understanding, the representation of the Jewish community would be entirely different. I guess so. I mean, Russia wouldn't be so different from Germany because, I mean, most of the uh, Jews living here, they are descendants from like the Soviet Union, right? Um, so first, I, I can say two things. First of all, the biggest understanding I have uh, in Germany, I've been touring with his films in many places, that Germans or in general, like many people don't understand or, or the reduction for uh, Judaism equals religion, right? So most people think Judaism is a religion, but this is not, um, 
fitting to most of the people living here because the Russian Soviet Jews, they brought a different understanding of their Judaism and they see any of them see their Judaism as an ethnic um, belonging, yeah, right? As an ethnic background. In the Soviet Union, as you have, you had Russians, Ukrainians, Moldovans, you also had Jews. Um, it was a kind of a nation thinking, which is also a little bit problematic in Germany. You know, seeing your Judaism as an ethnic uh, kind of background. Um, so people are confused in Germany and also in other places, like how can you be Jewish and not religious? How can you be Jewish and not practicing your Judaism? So what's Jewish about you? You know, and this is something very European, very German, the reduction of like Judaism to religion. And um, that's why I think um, Russia and Germany is not so different in their self understanding. But also, you know, when we made the film, I thought if it will be successful, it will be successful only in Germany because it's like so loaded with this uh, German Jewish themes and problems and um, political debates. And it was quite um, confusing for me, or really surprising how successful it was, for example, also in countries like Russia. Um, we won uh, awards in, in the, in, on Russian Jewish film festivals and also in film festivals in Russia. It was shown in many places. Um, yeah, this was, and this showed me that like maybe also the Jewish community is, um, understands and is confronted with the same, with same problems in Russia. But also we won, like not speaking only about Russia, we won like prizes in places where no Jews and no Jewish life, for example, like Kyoto in Japan, or in Mumbai, in India. I mean, there is a Jewish community, but like quite little, right? And it was so weird for me, like uh, winning an award in Mumbai, because I thought like, what are people understanding in Mumbai about this film, you know? <laughs> and from like traveling around and speaking to people, um, I understood that other minorities, marginalized groups in other places, doesn't matter where they are in the world, they are really empathetic with Dima because also they have the similar problems of marginalization. And uh, for example, the Muslim community in Germany, it's quite weird for me being in schools with like Muslim pupils in Germany and seeing that like people are really like identifying with this Jewish character with Dima in the film. Um, yeah. That's interesting. So Makes sense. Totally. Um, here's another interesting question from Ronan Joseph. <clears throat> I was very surprised to see that Dima's grandfather was attracted by AFD's policies in the movie. Is there a lot of support for this party in the German Jewish community? And if yes, why are some Jews willing to support a neo-Nazi party? Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't say there is a lot of support for, um, for the AFD but it's a phenomenon uh, which is not only in Germany, I would say it's worldwide. Um, I mean, Donald Trump has Jewish voters. Um, Le Pen or the Front National in France has Jewish voters. The right-wing populist parties in UK, in Netherlands, in Germany. This is something which is, um, which, which is quite, quite often, it's not huge. Um, obviously, the right wing uh, love towards Jews is a masking of racism against migrants and people with a migration background. I mean, it's a, it's an easy technique. You say you are against the migration because you want to protect the Jews. And obviously, these parties are also like widely anti-Semitic, right? So, um, but the interesting thing is that like. Many, especially um, Soviet Jews in Germany, they kind of uh, fall in this trap. They believe it. And um, like I said, the numbers are not too huge. And I think, I don't want to explain it, but I just want to say that it's kind of also understandable. I mean, people who came here from the Soviet Union with all the experience of anti-Semitism and came to Germany by believing now they live in, in peace and in quiet and quietly, and um, they have a fear of the Muslim migration to Germany, but also in the end, 
they are racist, right? So um, Jews are not free of like being not racist. And um, also they have the experience of being from a country. They grew up in a society in a very close system in the Soviet Union. And I would say the debate um, Dima has with his grandfather, and it's a debate between generations, which is quite often um, heard in uh, Jewish homes in Germany, between also generations. Um, yeah, and we kind of wanted to also to show this debate and to be honest to ourselves, not show only the outer Jewish problems, but also the inner Jewish problems. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, that answers that question. Yeah, and there's a good question that I was thinking about as well. What from, yeah, that is anonymous. What would you recommend Germans to do differently? I mean, there is a purpose for that movie. Uh, I mean, there are many things uh, we can speak about. We can speak about culture of remembrance. We can speak about the uh, approach and uh, dishonesty Germans have about their own uh, past and the way they spoke about um, the way Germans are dealing with anti-Semitism, the way they're dealing with um, Jewish life. But I think the foremost thing is like to freeing, um, you know, Jewish life in Germany feels like a uh, species detection. You know, uh, a kind of way the Germans re-imported Jews to Germany for themselves. And Jewish life always is kind of in a, in a way of a function for the so-called major German society. Um, and this is a problem. And I think um, also most Germans were busy remembering the past and putting up memorials to immunize themselves for the present in a way. And they were so proud of their narrative of the, being the world champions of coping with the past and having all this like culture of remembrance. And this is a completely untrue narrative. And this is a complete, you know, the country of the world champions of coping with the past has around 20, 25% of people with anti-Semitic views which is European average, um, which is not better than any other country in Europe with no um, culture of remembrance. And um, it's quite interesting when you see also like politicians, I remember there was the attack on the synagogue in Halle um, two years ago in Germany where right-wing terrorists uh, tried to massacre Jews in a synagogue. And it's always interesting. I mean, the, the, the Halle attack is not, wasn't really surprising for the Jewish community. It was shocking, but it wasn't surprising. And also, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, anti-Semitic attacks in Germany, which are happening more and more often, they're not really surprising for the Jewish community. What is surprising is the surprise from the non-Jewish German community, how everyone is going like, how is this possible in Germany? And how is, um, how is it, I remember like the, the, the German president after Halle, he came up um, um, and said something like, I think a day after Halle, he said um, he could not have imagined that in a country like Germany with its history, something like Halle could happen. And this shows um, a complete uh, misunderstanding of um, how German society and how widely anti-Semitism in German society is spread. You know, if the president of Germany doesn't see it, um, who else should and who else does? And I think this is a dishonesty, how German society told themselves anti-Semitism doesn't exist because it, it shouldn't exist. You know, because like of the because of the German past, and never again um, is something which is everywhere, and a never again is a completely empty phrase. 
first of all, it's not true. And secondly, it was already, it already mutated into a mere phrase before it was not true. And um, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this, um, but- <laughs> Keep going, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you ask how it can be that there are Nazis today, the answer is that probably they never really went away and there was a social taboo to talk about things openly. People were educated to have nothing against Jews and um, it kind of worked, I would say, on an institutional, on a political level, this never again, but it never worked on a private level. And um, this German narrative of the good Germany is, I mean, it is, is, is also challenged now, I would say by many um, voices, uh, very often Jewish voices. And I totally understand how comfortable kind of it is to tell yourself this narrative of Germans were resistance fighters and the Nazis, they're like aliens who came here and occupied Germany and <laughs> left the planets on the 9th of May, 1945. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe so far. Okay. Any other questions in the, in the Q&A, Florian, that I haven't seen? Uh, let me quickly see, but... Um... And okay, Stefan can, Haag asked yes. a question, and Stefan Haag wanted him? to have his camera on anyhow, so yes. let's bring Stefan Haag into the mix. Uh, let me quickly find him in the thing. There we go. Allow to talk. <laughs> 